Hi, my name is Travis Miner, and on behalf of Open Door Education, I'm here to share five simple tips for taking the new digital SAT. Tip number one, hide the timer. One of the things that's new on this digital SAT is the fact that students will be able to see a timer throughout their entire test, and that timer is going to be counting down the amount of time they have left in each section. This is great. It means we're less likely to run out of time or be surprised when a proctor says you only have five minutes left. However, it can be stressful to be sitting there watching your time tick away second by second. So I encourage students to hide the timer and then check the time at certain predetermined points in their test. Maybe when they get to the first writing question, that's when they check their timer. Maybe when they get to the 12th question in the math section, they check their timer. It's going to be different for each person, but in general, we want to hide the timer so that we're not just watching our time ticking away and having that increased anxiety, and periodically decide when we'll check the time so that we're taking control of our timing rather than letting the SAT push us around or intimidate us with that timer counting down. One other important note here, the timer will automatically show up when you have five minutes remaining in a section. So don't worry, if you forgot to check the timer, you will still get a heads up when you have about five minutes left because that timer will reappear and you know you've got five minutes to finish everything in that section. Tip number two, organize your scratch paper. Yes, the new SAT is digital and you'll be taking it on a computer, but you will still have scrap paper available to you, and you're probably going to use that scrap paper quite a bit, especially during the math section, to write down some of your work and calculations and operations. What we want to do is make sure that we don't let all of our work get mixed in together so we can't go back and check our operations or check our calculations for a particular problem. So the fix is simple. When you get your scrap paper, draw a couple of vertical lines and a couple of horizontal lines so that you create a bunch of boxes and that way you can keep all of your work for a single problem in just one box and also write the question number in that box. This means that if you have a couple minutes left at the end of a section to go back and check your work, you can actually go back to a particular problem and see on your scrap paper, where was I doing my work? Let me check my operations and make sure I've got this one right. Tip number three, flag challenging problems. The new testing platform for the College Board has a little tool that allows you to actually mark. This question was confusing. You can flag it. When you're going through the test, if you get to a question that's especially difficult, maybe you feel like you're guessing a little bit, maybe you start to run out of time and felt you had to put down an answer, but you're not 100% confident in it, go ahead, flag that question so that when you finish the section, if you have some time left, you know which questions to go back to and reinvestigate or reattempt. Flagging questions is a great way to leave yourself reminders, but also to allow yourself to keep moving through the test rather than getting stuck on one problem and spending too much time there. Tip number four, trust your gut. In many cases, students with extra time will go back and take a look at the questions that they had some difficulty with, maybe the questions that they flagged, and sometimes they'll say, you know, I thought it was B, now I feel like it's C, and they'll change their answers. In most cases, those students change from the correct answer to the incorrect answer. So your job is this. If you go back to a question that you have previously answered, you should only change it if either A, you find a specific mistake, or B, you learn something new. If you find a specific mistake or you learn something new, okay, you should re-attack that problem and possibly change your answer based on this new information. Outside of that, do not change your answer just based on gut feel. Trust your original gut instinct. Studies have shown that more often than not, you're better to leave it the way it was than to change it just based on gut feel. Tip number five, use your break productively. So most students will have a 10 minute break in the middle of their SAT. At this point, it's tempting to talk with your friends in the hall about what did they experience or what did they get for this particular question. Your job is to refuel yourself and take care of your basic needs. So this means go to the bathroom, hydrate, have a snack, and then think about what's coming next. 
You don't have any control over what's already happened, but you do still have control over the next section of the test, which is going to be the math section. So use that break to think, all right, what are the formulas I need to remember going into this section? What are the tips and tricks that I need to remember, uh, the strategies that I should be planning to apply in the math section of this test? That is a much more productive use of your time than focusing on what's already happened on the test. So your last tip here, focus on using your breaks productively. It's going to set you up to have the best possible experience in that second half of the test. I hope that these are helpful tips to get you started on the digital SAT. Please visit us online at opendoor.education for more tips and additional resources to help support your preparation. Thanks so much.